Thank you very much. It's my pleasure and honor today to introduce Supervisor Cindy Chavez. She began her public service in, 19, in the 1990s as a policy analyst for healthcare, public health, human services, and transportation for the Board of Supervisors. And I think I've known Cindy that long. In fact, I don't want to give her age away, but she's, she is much younger. I remember it was the days of miniskirts, Cindy. <laughs> When we, when we both could wear them. <laughs> so it was a while back, but she is much younger. <laughs> she served two, two terms on the San Jose City Council, where she also served as vice mayor. She served as executive director of Working Partnerships USA and the South Bay AFL-CIO Council. Now, she has been busy. She cares about the community. She cares about people. She was a champion in combating human trafficking uh, and uh, helped start an office, a commission on human trafficking for Santa Clara County. She also was very involved and concerned with our youth and this summer partnering with the city provided over a thousand youth with jobs, training and jobs. A lot of them were here at Connection. We were had the pleasure of having many of the students here, but Cindy was right there helping our youth. And then she's also um, had the most successful bu uh, gun buyback program in the Bay Area. And you know we want those guns off the street, right? But uh, Cindy is sick today. I don't know how she does it. She, uh, I, this is the second time I've heard her speak today, and she is sick as a dog, but she's here. She uh, represents over 360,000 people in Central, South, East San Jose on the County Board of Supervisors. She's been a champion of women and Latino issues. Please welcome Cindy Chavez. Well, good evening. Okay, you guys, I'm the one on cold medicine. Snap it up. All right. So um, I'm really excited uh, to be here today. And I, I was reflecting on um, Raul's point about, you know, how our families help train us. And I was thinking, that's right. When I was 16, I got, a, I got a, my ears pierced, and I got on restriction. So I didn't get permission from my parents. I was locked up by my parents, which is another story that we'll have a conversation about, um, I hope, in the future, about how we raise the differences between the way we raise boys and girls and how we create leaders. Um, let me start by acknowledging Rene Santiago, who's here with his son. Rene is the head of our health and hospital system for the County of Santa Clara, and I'm so excited to see you here. You hear it today with your beautiful boy, and all he gets is popcorn, but thank you, Rene, for joining us. Um, and I'm really honored to be here with Supervisor Cortezi. And what I thought I would do is just, oh, and Bob um, Mendicucci, who's the head of our social services agency, and Marielle, who you heard introduced earlier, who's um, a leader in our probation department. So we have a lot of county leaders here today. Um, what I thought I would do is just take a couple minutes to talk about some of the big programming that's been happening. And I wanted to start with an announcement that President Cortezi made today that I just thought was so uh, profound and something that both the county and the city are going to be taking on. And under Dave's leadership, we're going to be fighting for pay equity in Santa Clara County, both in terms of all of our employees and all of our contracts. And the reason I was so excited to see Supervisor Cortezi at the county level and um, count City Council Member Don Rocha, along with Magdalena Carrasco, um, at the um, city level, and I'm sure Raul will be right in there, is that this issue is not an issue that's a woman's issue. We talk about it like it is, like, you know, it's, it's a challenge for women, but it isn't. When we steal from anybody, it impacts the entire community. And there are a lot of statistics I could share about the fact that women still make 76 cents on the dollar. We've all heard that. But in Santa Clara County, Latinas, for the same type of work make 44 cents to every dollar their male white counterparts, 44 cents. So the leadership that is being taken by these gentlemen in partnership with um, strong women, um, I think is gonna be really altering for our community. And the reason it's so important that we're doing this here is that people outside of Silicon Valley think this place is, the roads are paved with gold. And we know that in fact the disparity between the haves and have nots are, is more dramatic here 
than almost any other place in the country and more dramatic in this period of time than any other single time in the history of the world. So that's one thing that um, Dave's got on his list and I was just honored to be part of um, his press conference today announcing that. Um, this year, we, in partnership, again, under the leadership of Supervisor Cortezi and the mayor of San Jose, we did a program to get as many youth as we could to work this summer. What was very exciting about this is we kicked it off in January, and everybody said, oh, it's going to be too hard, we can't do it, blah, blah. and we got over 700 young people jobs this summer. And isn't that amazing? And, and let me just make two points about why that's so critical. A lot of, for a lot of us, when we were kids, it was easy to get a summer job. It is more difficult for young people to get jobs now than it was when we were kids because there are so many seniors fighting for those same jobs. So people who are leaving the job market but aren't quite ready to go, they can't afford to retire, are staying in, and we have young people unable to get those jobs. So these opportunities were very important. But for the county in particular, the county targeted young people who were foster youth, who get um, CalFresh or some other benefit from the county. And what we know for a lot of these families is they don't have the networks or connections to help young people get these kinds of jobs and opportunities. And this kind of program really, really helped with that. So we did our first program. We're still looking at the evaluations from the young people. I can tell you that we had a lot of very excited young people with their first, um, first areas of work. And they had no problem giving us their feedback about how we can improve it. So we will be doing that. And what I'm hoping is, is that we're going to be bringing this program back um, in the next year. We have a little bit of money left this program cycle, so we're trying to spend it this fall so that we make sure we can keep the program going. So if any of you participated, we'd love to get your feedback. And I do want to acknowledge the leadership of organizations like Conexion that were willing to step up and really provide those mentorships and those programs. VTA, I heard I think I've been listening to you forever tell me, you go make sure there are more opportunities for us. And so here's the great news. With the Valley Transportation Authority, you will see a more aggressive program than we've ever had in all the years I've served on it for small businesses, minority-owned businesses, and women-owned businesses. If you have a firm that is doing anything in um, construction, engineering, environmental sciences, any of those kinds of services, please go on the Valley Transportation Authority website. They have a very av aggressive program. It's higher than, this, than what the federal government is requesting under the leadership of our new executive director, Nuria Fernandez. So please go take advantage, because the next time I come back here, I want to hear people say, I tried, not when is it going to happen? Because I'm going to say, you go sign up. Everybody OK with that? All right. Now. At the county, the other thing we've done this year, uh, again under the leadership of Supervisor Cortezi and um, Supervisor Ken Yeager, is we've established the highest living wage and the most comprehensive living wage policy of any other county in the country. That means that if you were doing business with the county of Santa Clara, you were paying a minimum of $19.06 an hour and offering benefits. We also put together one of the strongest wage theft ordinances in the country. And what does that mean? That means if you steal from your employees, you will not be doing business with the county of Santa Clara. And the district attorney is also taking a very aggressive look at people who are doing that, and it's about time. We need more um, laws to allow, just allow us to make sure that when um, wages are stolen, that we have a better ability to get them back from businesses. But we'll be coming back to ask you for your help on that. Now, again, you might think I'm just bragging about Dave, but it's not just I'm not just meaning to do that, only he's been also very busy. One of the um, things that he announced as he became president of the Board of Supervisors is he developed a housing and homelessness task force. That task force has been enormously aggressive based on his um, goals in terms of bringing product back to the Board of Supervisors. Many of you may know that the County of Santa Clara today spends over $40 million a year on housing. We spend that housing people who are mentally ill. We spend that housing people who are foster youth. We spend that housing uh, money for uh, housing for people who are in programs. The importance of this is that we also spend another $250 million supporting people who are homeless. What we're trying to do is take that $250 million, figure out how to bear marry it with that 40 million and do a much better job of providing services and housing. There will be a package coming to the Board of Supervisors in the next two weeks that asks us to look at spending $26 million. Here's what's really important about that. A big portion of that money, again based on Supervisor Cortez's direction, is going to be focused on veterans and housing homeless veterans. But another is going to be on, uh, focused on housing people immediately meaning how do we deal with the fact that we don't have enough housing built 
and where do people go in the meantime? So we're looking at some very innovative programs out of Oregon and other parts of the country that look at temporary, not shelters, but I'm looking at everything from uh, car parks to encampments, but providing um, encampments that are safe, clean, and secure. So we're looking at all of that over the next um, couple of weeks, and I would just implore you to look at the county agenda. If this is of interest to you, we want to hear your voices on it. Um, and we're going to be doing much more on housing. One last thing on the housing front, and I, I timed myself because I know I had a long list of stuff I wanted to share with you. Um, but one last thing on the housing front that I wanted to make sure we acknowledge is that, as you know, there's a very big discussion going on right now about whether or not we go out for another transportation tax in order to complete BART to um, downtown San Jose and into Santa Clara and other, um, other uh, roadway improvements. Myself and other advocates, including Supervisor Cortezi, are considering adding housing to that. The importance of that is that in order to house all of the people who are in need of housing right now, we would need about a billion dollars. What we're looking at is trying to take some percentage of all of the money that comes for that tax and be able to start building supportive housing. And that will allow us to have housing for people who are mentally ill, people who are transit dependent, people who have drug and alcohol problems, and making sure we can get them on their feet. Because here's what we know from other parts of the country. When you house people first, you're able to deal with all the other issues. What we can't do is try to deal with those issues outside of them being housed. Imagine, how do you stop drinking when you have no place to live, or how do you heal a broken leg? So this is about us being not just compassionate, but ruthlessly disciplined about investing our commonwealth in a way that really does ameliorate suffering, but in the long run, that we are very, very responsible with people's money. And in a way, we've been charitable, but we've not been responsible. This is our opportunity to do that. I'm going to close because I have so many other things to talk to you about, but I want to close with the work we're doing around realignment. As many of you know, the state of California has passed their responsibility for housing people who are in jail to counties. And they did it to save money. But the opportunity for us is that at a local level, we can save lives. And I just want to give you a couple of statistics. The county has become responsible for over 3,742 people that would have been housed in state um, jail. We have 722 of them in our jails. 823 of them are in split sentences. 2,197 are being supervised or un who had been supervised or are under our supervision currently. But what's really, really exciting about this is that we created a reentry center so that when people get out of jail, they have a place to go to get services for drug, alcohol, mental health, treatment, and housing, which is partly why we need that housing tax. Um, but here's what we found out. When the state of California lets people out of prison, their recidivism rate is 67%. That means that within three years, 67% of the people who were in jail go back. For the county of Santa Clara, in our first three years, we are at 37%. We cut it in half, which means that we're doing something right and well. It's very expensive, so we got to learn, how, understand how to do this in a much more strategic way, but we continue to refine and learn from um, the folks that we're working with. And I think what we're learning, and this is one of the reasons I'm so blessed and honored to be part of local government, is you really can take good ideas our commonwealth and work with people like Raul and Dave and Ken and other really good people on the Board of Supervisors and change people's lives in our lifetime. And frankly, measure what we do well and right, stop doing what we're not doing well and right, and reinvest in what we know makes a difference in people's lives. So with that, I'm going to stop talking at you and just say I'm thrilled to be here. And if you invite me back, I'll finish my list. Thank you.